This is Twit. Um, okay, so let's do some headlines, <laughs> and we'll start with, uh, it's an easy guess, Starliner. That, hey, it's coming home. We have a date. It's right. That's right. Finally, at long last, what, three, three months after it launched into space, uh, Starliner will return home just after Labor Day weekend, you know? Uh, but I guess I guess um, Boeing found out it's not not kosher to wear white after Labor Day. So they're bringing their, their blue and white uh, space capsule back to Earth. This is obviously from space.com, but everyone else was reporting it too. Mm-hmm. NASA and yeah. Boeing have set September 6th, which is next Friday, Rod, right hours after you and I record our next episode, uh, Boeing will return to Earth. And so we're going to find out how it all goes. But mark your calendars because you're going to be able to watch it live uh, late Friday night. Uh, the, the action will, will happen. I think it undocks around 6 and it lands around 12 a.m. on Saturday. So it's going to be a pretty interesting time. Coming back empty as well, as we all remember. Uh, and in fact, NASA just announced who is going to be flying up on Crew-9 uh, and, and and who lost their seats. And right now it's uh, yeah. Nick Hague and the Russian cosmonaut who are flying. And that means that Zana Cardman and and um, the other crew member won't, 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 will have to wait for their next flight. So, so I, you know, it's an interesting contrast. So we've got this Starliner drama going on. And uh, again, hopefully they'll get things straightened out. Hopefully it'll come back fine. Hopefully this was an overabundance of caution, which is always a good thing. Uh, if you're flying people in space yeah and hopefully they move forward and they are able to at least fly out their six flights with this thing before the space station is uh ended but in a kind of stunning contrast at the same time all this is going on spacex is flying professional tourists up in orbit with that's Jared right Eisenman to go higher than anybody's gone since uh gemini 11 or the apollo program and um I don't know. You know, you just look at that. They're not related, and I get that. No, but no. you've got this, the dragon doing yeoman work uh, very admirably. And, um, you know, hopefully it will continue to keep doing that. And I'll let you draw your own conclusions. I just, I saw that. For, and immediately after that, I read a Starliner article, and I thought, these things don't transpose well. For perspective, the next launch in September of NASA crew on SpaceX Dragon will be their 10th crewed flight for NASA. And I think they've launched four other private flights already with, with AX one through three plus uh, Inspiration four. So, so that's yeah. that's a lot. That's a lot. We'll let that speak for itself. Okay, moving on. Speaking of SpaceX, not all is wine and roses. Uh, that's they right. had a record-setting twenty-third flight for one of their boosters uh, that I think flew uh, the first crew flight, right? It flew uh, Inspiration four. It flew Demo mm. two. I believe, which was, which was the crude flight, plus something like 16 or something different. But Starlink, it won't be flying is, anymore. No, well, maybe no. Not. Actually, they may. No, no, it. no, no. It is not flying anymore. In fact, on line 22, John, uh, you can see <laughs> you can see what remains of booster one zero six two. Not not a lot is uh, yeah. is is the uh, uh, the message there. Uh, photographer John Kraus got shots of it coming back on the drone ship. But uh, this is. Uh, as you as you uh, explain, uh, uh, Boeing's uh, not Boeing's. <laughs> I haven't had enough coffee yet. SpaceX's <laughs> most flown uh, that was uh, booster. I, yeah. I tell you, uh, booster ten sixty two. This was um, uh, you know going to be like their big twenty third oh, uh, landing. Yeah, and there's not much left of that thing, is there? No, it launched a, a Starlink mission on wow. on the twenty eighth, really early in the morning on the twenty eighth. Uh, perfectly, mission went fine. Deployed the payloads fine, but when it was trying to land, something happened. It looked like one of the leg struts buckled, and the thing toppled over. It also looked like it caught fire as well, uh, and uh, and it just it tipped it tipped on its side. Uh, you saw a big splash in the ocean, and then uh, the feed cut cut to black. Uh, it looks like it just broke in half for, or blew up or whatever, and you still have the the those Merlin engines there. But interesting to see what SpaceX does with this, or. If Jared Isaacman, billionaire Polaris Dawn commander who flew on this booster, buys it and like mounts it, I don't know where you would. Oh mount no, I think that. I think Steve Jurvetson <laughs> will buy it. Yeah, and he'll, so, he'll he'll make an office chair out of it or something. You know what's it, weird? Excuse me for j- jumping into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
one of the press accounts I read, and it was from one of the more reputable outlets, I think. So not space.com. <laughs> hey, oh. <laughs> well, it wasn't you guys. I don't know. They quoted <laughs> SpaceX as saying, we'll evaluate it for possible reuse. So I don't know if that was before they saw what was actually on the barge or. It, 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 it could be. Those are, no. those are beefy uh, rocket engines. There could be something that they might be able to requalify after it, but they're going to look at it to see like what happened for sure. And, you know, we're, 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 we've been talking a lot about, oh, this is so atypical. I think it's their first failed landing since 2013 something yeah. like that a long long time right uh, it's it, it's been since they, they they missed a landing 260 something successful landings right? exactly exactly uh and the 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 one wrinkle is that the faa announced shortly after the failure uh that they want to investigate it i guess to make sure that there wasn't any issue with the booster itself from launch that could have caused it, which would have affected all other SpaceX missions. But SpaceX stood down from a, a second Starlink on the same day. And um, th their Polaris Dawn mission, which we're going to talk about in a bit also, uh, has been pending. And let's make that not a bit. Let's make that now. Polaris yeah. Dawn. Delayed again, darn it. Delayed again by weather, apparently this time. So yeah. this is the mission we were alerting to earlier. Uh, uh, billionaire Jared Isaacman uh, bought another trip to space with SpaceX. Actually, this is the first of three trips under the Polaris program, Polaris Dawn, to attempt the first ever, uh, the first ever uh, private spacewalk, fly higher. Uh, like the highest mission since Apollo 17, actually in 1972, uh, and uh, and then hopefully. Uh, just break a bunch of records across the board. They were delayed by uh, helium leaks on the ground, then again by more uh, rocket checks, and then by weather at the splashdown site five days after launch. They want the the forecasts are really bad apparently uh, for that. They want those uh, uh, those waves to be low so then they go recover the crew uh, easily. And uh, after they delayed uh, the launch uh, from I think it was the twenty eighth they were looking for. Uh, they just they're just pending they don't know when the weather is going to look good for landing now it's really strange that they haven't said that it's delayed because the faa has kind of grounded spacex launches from that booster failure uh from the landing but um we'll have to see if if that has any kind of impact on that uh both uh, spacex and jared isaacman have said it's really just the weather that uh they're still in quarantine uh this private crew and they're hoping to fly as soon as they get word all right, and uh, let's wrap this up with uh, we have some additional information on the failure of uh, Astrobotics Peregrine Lander. No, Intuitive Machines Peregrine no, Lander, right? No, 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 it was Astrobotics. Astrobotics, you are correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Astrobotics, they, they, they had a if press conference. If I say it enough times, I'll get it right. <laughs> they had a press conference um, this week to talk about what exactly failed on the Peregrine Moon Lander when they launched it uh, on what January 8th this year, which was the first flight of the United Launch Alliance's uh, Vulcan rocket. And uh, as our listeners might remember, they never actually were able to, to reach it to the moon uh, with the lander. They, it had a, a failure after separating from the rocket uh, and the, the engines, you know, had problems and they were never able to make the orbit to, to you know, reach the moon. Uh, and instead it came back to Earth. It, I think it re-entered the atmosphere on the 18th and burned up, you know, RIP Peregrine Lander. Uh, and, uh, and so what they said this week is that they've pinned it down to what sounds like uh, more leaks on a private vehicle uh, and, a, and a faulty valve that wasn't sealed properly. And because of that, it, it kind of messed up the, the engine itself. They weren't able to, to use it properly. Uh, you can't use your engine properly. You can't maintain your, your orbit. You can't do your orbit changes uh, to leave Earth orbit. And, and that's what kind of uh, uh, spoiled the entire thing. Uh, it is a bit disappointing because uh, as they were getting ready for their next mission, NASA's Viper rover, NASA canceled that mission too. So they're kind of in a, a, a bit of a quandary to try to figure out what, what the next steps are going to be. But at least they know you know, at least as conclusively as they can, what went wrong with Peregrine, how to make the next one uh, a bit better, and uh, maybe offer some comp uh, consolation rides to the customers who lost their trip to the moon. 